Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Isha and you're watching The Progress Element. I share a lot of academic opportunities and scholarship application processes here on this channel. Today I will be talking about the Minerva Schools at KGI application process. For those of you who don't know, I am a student at Minerva Schools and I'm currently based in London. So for those who don't know what Minerva Schools is, Minerva is a highly selective American university based in San Francisco, California. It has a global rotation program through which you can travel and study in seven different countries over the course of four years. These seven countries include the US, UK, Germany, Taiwan, Korea, India, and Argentina. What's really cool about Minerva is that it has a merit-based admissions process and it is need-blind for all students and it meets the demonstrated needs for all students. This means that if you are an international student, you have a higher chance of getting in because there's no preference given to a certain nationality. And if you get in, you will get a financial package that meets your demonstrated need. What makes the Minerva application process different according to their website is that it does not include the SAT, the ACT, there is no enrollment cap, there are no quotas, and there is no preferential treatment like I mentioned for students from the US, for legacy students, or for recruited athletes. There is also no consideration of family status or financial situations in the admissions process, which is great. One thing that you should know about Minerva is that it is an unconventional university with an unconventional application process. Today I will be taking you through the entire application process and giving you several tips to best prepare for this application process and to approach it as a whole. Please keep in mind that I did get into Minerva several years ago and the application process changes each year. That being said, I did work in the admissions office during my first year at Minerva, so a lot of the things that I will share here will have insights drawn from my experience from working at the back end and looking at students' applications. That being said, I will not share a lot of secret tips or cheat codes into getting into Minerva because in all honesty, there are none because the application process is structured in a way that you cannot prepare for it in the traditional sense. So you can only put yourself in the best position to show your best traits and that is what I'm going to talk about. So the application process has three parts. The first is who you are, the second is how you think, and the third is what you have accomplished. So the first part is very simple and you can find all three parts on the Minerva application website. The first part basically is providing your basic information and giving an overview of your academic history and giving examples of your accomplishments. The second part is a set of challenges, which I will speak about later. And the third part is accomplishments. So listing a set of accomplishments, whether academic or non-academic, and that is all the application process requires. I do remember that there was a form for your counselor to fill out. So I think that should be either in the first part or in one of the parts of the application process. I don't remember which one. And um, one other thing is that there is a separate application for financial aid. So if you are applying for a scholarship, you will have to apply after filling out this application. My general advice would be to not try to fake a personality, be genuine and be proud of yourself for taking the first step. I know that it can be really intimidating to apply to a college that has such a low acceptance rate, but you really are taking the first step by watching this video and researching. To further add to that, I would really encourage you to research more about Minerva, what the college is like, and why you are applying, including what you think you will bring to the community at Minerva. This will really help you feel more prepared to answer questions during the application process. Another really obvious tip is to not cheat. You may think that you have hacked the system and that you know how to fool us and how to look at all the application questions in advance, but it really doesn't help. And people really are monitoring you. So it is highly, highly likely that you will be caught and you will just jeopardize your own application process. For the Minerva challenges, you will have reading, writing, math, reasoning, creativity, and expressions, which is actually an interview. 
For the challenges, my general advice to you would be to pace them out. You can and should take a break in between different challenges and ideally attempt different challenges on different days. Another thing is that you should not stress out if you mess up on one challenge. Please do not let it affect your performance in another challenge because the Minerva application process is holistic and you do not know exactly what they are looking at. So it is best to put your best foot forward and not let one failure affect another accomplishment or another section of the application. Please also make sure that you are in a distraction-free space with no noise in the background and no people distracting you and you are in a clear state of mind. Last but not least, please try the practice tests. These are really helpful and these come up whenever you click on one application challenge. You can practice these tests for as long as you want and then attempt the challenge itself. These are there for a reason, so please make use of them. So first, let's talk about writing. In writing, you will be given a prompt and you will have to write a passage or an essay to address the prompt. Please make sure that you address the prompt directly and address all parts of the prompt. You will not get any extra points by bringing in extra sources of information, so just focus on the prompt and write a clear and concise answer. Make sure that you are grammatically correct, that your writing is structured well, and that you use sound reasoning to back up your decisions. For the math challenge, you will be given a set of questions that you will then need to solve. I think this was very similar to any basic high school math or the SAT 1 math. For this, I would really recommend you to first solve the questions that you think you can solve and you know you can solve, and maybe even leave those that you don't know to the end. I remember that we were short on time, so I was really afraid that I did really bad on this challenge, but it turned out that I probably did not because I got in. The reasoning challenge has a basic IQ test-like structure, so I would suggest looking at one of those if you haven't already. It's basically a bit like matching different shapes and looking at the logic behind what's going on and really trying to provide an answer. The practice tests are really, really helpful for this challenge. The reading section is fairly simple as well. It is simply a comprehension passage with some questions towards the end that you need to answer. Please read the passage carefully and go back to the passage when answering the questions so that you are answering them as right as possible. The creativity challenge is possibly my favorite because you are given an object and then you need to list down a list of uses for this object and you can be as creative as you want. For this challenge as well, you can practice as much as you want beforehand and I think practice really helps because this challenge is based on the concept of divergent thinking. For this challenge, I would advise you to list down the most common uses for that object first. So for example, if you got something like a shoe, write that you can wear it or you can style it in different ways first and then move on to the more creative ways to use it. And I would also advise you to not shoot down your own ideas because the whole purpose of this challenge is to list down as many uses as you possibly can and also be as detailed as you possibly can. The last challenge is an interview called the Expressions Challenge. In this challenge, you are given different questions and then you are given a minute or two to prepare your answer and then you answer in a recorded format. So for this challenge, I would really advise you to make sure that you have good audio and video quality and you are using a device that is properly functioning. Also make sure you are in a space that is free from other distractions. Other than that, I would advise you to bring a pen and paper and jot down your thoughts and organize your answers during the answer prep time. Make sure that when you answer, you are focused and organized and to the point. If you want to prepare for this challenge, you can practice timed speaking because your answers will be timed. After completing the challenges, the last part of the application process is the accomplishment section, where you are given six different slots to list down six different accomplishments. For this section, I would highly encourage you to be creative and look at your accomplishments, not only in the academic sense, but also outside of academics. And if these are unconventional accomplishments, then make sure that you justify them and why they matter to you within the accomplishment description. 
I would also highly encourage you to measure the impact and use quantifiable measures wherever possible. Also, make sure that you provide all necessary evidence. Lastly, of course, I would encourage you to provide all six accomplishments or as many as you can. That is all for today's video. I really hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe because I will be creating more content regarding Minerva. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below or DM me on Instagram and I will be sure to answer. See you soon. Good luck.